so can we yeah what can we do uh, more uh, yeah we have layers and increasing layers and going uh, deeper uh, but how uh, let's see uh, yeah, we just here uh, mostly talking about the power of going deeper, uh, because I think this is the the, uh, the answer of uh, your question about like why different filters. I mean, why different different convolution operations they are using like one by one, three by three, uh, and different uh, number of uh, feature maps. Uh, I think the answer for me, like uh, one of the answer maybe. Uh, to get like richer uh, contextual information, extracting like more like useful uh, information from image. Uh, that's why yeah, different uh, convolution operations, different uh, filters uh, are like concatenated or uh, added. Uh, in case of ResNet and DanceNet, uh, this is the case. Uh, we are going deeper. But while going deeper, uh, yeah, we are using the more uh, like diversified features to get like uh, to have more information to extract more information about the uh, input. So, so power of going deeper. Uh, slide is a little long. Huh? Yeah, shallow and uh, deeper network, and in extra layers, uh, because in the early layers we are mostly getting uh, having uh, low level features uh, like edges, uh, uh, like corners or something, uh, and then go, when going deeper, when applying more uh, filtering operations, uh, we will have like the high level features we will like. Uh, in the slides, uh, in the beginning, there is an intro. Uh, this is like an example. Uh, yeah, this is different uh, filters, and uh, each filter, uh, the the image is responding in a different way. Uh, we can uh, extract uh, edges, extract uh, like corners, extract colors. Uh, when going deeper, yeah, this information is increasing. But the question is, uh, I mean, is there any limit for uh, going deeper? Uh, is there any limit for that? Yeah, like, can you tell something? Like, there should be a limit, right? Because we are dealing with mathematical operations, and uh, when going deeper, when adding uh, many like layers, applying many convolutions, uh, we should have like, like millions of. Uh, Parameters and then many computations, uh, so there must be a like a payoff, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we have a, a vanishing gradient problem, uh, as Alisha mentioned in his slides. Uh, what is the vanishing gradient? Uh, sometimes in the, in implementation we can observe something uh, like this: uh, uh, a response of network. Uh, this is a train test uh, error, I mean accuracy. Uh, these ep epochs uh, or iterations, you can think like this. Uh, at the beginning of the, the training, uh, we, like, we have pretty much like 80% of accuracy, but uh, this is really beginning of the training, uh, after a few epochs maybe. And then it's starting to not learning any, anything. Uh, it's repeating. It's not updating its parameters. So basically, it's not learning. Uh, the gradients is not the only answer for this problem. Maybe there, there, there are other problems, like uh, maybe we need a, a good regularization approach. Uh, but yeah, mostly, if we, if we have a vanishing gradient problem, we, we, we can uh, observe this kind of uh, output uh, during the training. Why this is happening? Because after repeated layer 
operations. Uh, gradient norm, which is the like magnitude of gradient, uh, is going uh, almost zero. For example, this is the first layer, uh, some like intermediate layers, and the last layer, I say, and number of iterations. Uh, at the beginning, it's uh, the, uh, in the first layer, we have, for example, this magnitude. Uh, in the, the intermediate layers, magnitude is going like small. Uh, in, the up, in the last layers, we have like more uh, smaller uh, magnitude of gradients. Uh, when doing the whole operation, as you see here, uh, at the last layer especially, uh, gradients are, uh, magnitude of gradients are being very, very small, like almost infinitely zero, infinitely small. So this is very big problem uh, because we need gradients uh, to uh, to learn something, to update our parameters. This is the, the crit very critical part of uh, all the training, maybe. Uh, let's just a uh, uh, little, uh, like, remind some backpropagation operation. Uh, because, yeah, backpropagation is uh, all related to gradients. Uh, this is the, the learning is happening. Uh, learning starting actually from beginning of the, uh, the convolutions, beginning of the process, uh, but after finishing process, uh, so we need to update up our parameters in a back, uh, uh, in a back way, in a back path. Uh, let's say we have, like this is a network, uh, we have an input A and output B. Uh, this is the P dimension to N dimension, which is, you can like think this P dimension is uh, side of image, uh, say like 600 times 600, uh, when uh, multiplying this, yeah. Quick point, you have a laser pointer going on to middle one. Ah, sorry. <laughs> it towards the other. Okay, this is the P dimension. Uh, this is the, uh, the input uh, features. Uh, if you have like 600 times 600, which means like uh, multiplying this 600 times 600 uh, uh, features we have. Uh, and then we are uh, mapping these features into this n dimension. This can be like n classes. And this is our network. Yeah, let's extend this and let's little uh, open. Uh, these are features are uh, from our image, uh, our data set. Uh, millions of parameters we have and some numbers of uh, outputs. And we have a neural network here. Uh, so yeah, uh, we we need to uh, find the out the relation between the output and input. This is the the back propagation is uh, dealing with. Uh, this is a bigger version. Let's say this is the one layer, the another layer. There are many layers. Let's say and the input and output. Uh, so so we are uh, dealing with the relation between the the outputs and inputs by by how? By using uh, like mathematical notations like partial derivative. Uh, by checking uh, each partial derivative between these uh, outputs to like these inputs and intermediate parameters, uh, and like calculating using uh, sorry, it was a chain rule. I didn't write the name here. Uh, by using the chain rule, we just multiply all these partial derivatives and sum up them. Uh, yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is a little boring, but uh, I just uh, want to <laughs> remind something and then go to the main idea. Uh, I just want to tell here uh, we have many operations, mathematical operations here is happening during the back propagation. Uh, Let's say this is a gradient of a single node uh, or a single layer. Uh, so we are looking for uh, partial derivatives of uh, outputs to inputs, right? But imagine all all partial derivatives, all like all calculations, all the relation between outputs and inputs and intermediate parameters. So this is really very like huge uh, 
calculations, right? Huge like mathematical operations. Uh, during these operations, this is the gradient, actually. Uh, I mean, gradient of loss. Here we can easily understand. Uh, whole operation and we get a loss uh, by comparing this input and uh, prediction, I mean, uh, the uh, prediction and uh, our labels, and then we have a loss. So we want to use these laws, I mean, we want to uh, get the, uh, the gradients of these laws to update our parameters. So this is the, maybe the, all the critical uh, like formulation. So we have these uh, uh, past like parameters and we need the new parameters for every like uh, epoch. So we want to update our parameters by using this gradient term. The alpha is uh, the regularization term. So this gradient is uh, the, uh, the key, uh, uh, key thing is to calculate, to update our parameters. But when, just imagine that the, when this gradient is going zero, this term will be zero, right? So we will have all parameters equals the, the, the pass like, parameters. So there will be no learning. Mm -hmm. We all, like at every like epoch, we will have the same parameters or very like same to previous uh, epochs parameters because this is going almost zero after going deeper and deeper because of uh, because of many many calculations many many like multiplications okay uh, yeah in forward operation we are inputting and then layer by layer this input is going we are also memorizing the gradients, I mean, the, the partial derivatives of uh, uh, each output to inputs, and then using these partial derivatives to uh, use like uh, in back propagation process uh, to update our parameters. But uh, here, we have very weak gradients. At the beginning, we had very strong uh, gradients. I mean, in this uh, process, let's say, in actually, this is like you can think like this in the forward operation. Uh, we have in the in the very early layers we have like strong gradients, and when going deeper and deeper, our gradients are going very like uh, small values. Okay, let's check what the ResNet is doing for this problem uh, to solve the gradient vanishing problem. Uh, yeah, they use the re identity shortcut uh, residual connections uh, to help gradients to like easily flow. Let's see, this is a standard connection. Uh, we are just uh, inputting something and then uh, uh, like a standalone operations and applying multiple uh, convolutions and having these uh, outputs, but our gradients at the beginning were was very like, uh, uh, strong, but uh, here, little weak, not little, uh, very weak, when considering this is very deep network. Uh, so ResNet uh, just introduced a skipping connection, which is identity connection, actually. Uh, it's just uh, uh, telling us to add the every, uh, every layers to the other, the, the, the next common layers. <laughs> Uh, because during this operation, gradients are going very like small values. But when we uh, push the gradients through this path, uh, which there is not much operation here. Uh, I mean, there is in this graph, there is no operation here. There is no any convolution or any operation. So gradients are very easily going here, and then we still have very like useful gradients. And uh, we are reusing these features, right? Uh, so this is another power of this uh, architecture, reusing features, reusing different like uh, diversified features. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the same graph actually. Uh, inputs coming through the, these uh, convolution and rational operations and coming here and then directly also input coming here. I mean, this input is, you can I think like feature maps. Uh, basically, and then adding them here, summing them, element-wise uh, summation. In this way, you will have still 
uh, good gradients uh, to update our parameters. Uh, yeah, this is a plain network. If we design a very deep network, these should be should be like some similar to this. Uh, we add more layers, but uh, this will not work because uh, we will you know uh, we will face it, the parameter uh, the parameter update problem because of the vanishing gradients. Uh, and this is ResNet, uh, just skipping uh, some uh, layers and adding some skip connections, uh, every like two layers or three layers, uh, and summing them here, and doing this uh, the uh, operation through the whole network, and adding more and more <coughs> layers, like 50 layers, 100 layers, 150 layers, in this way. Yeah, this is just uh, another uh, implementation of ResNet, which is called ResNext. Uh, as you, uh, the, there was a question about Inception. Uh, yeah, there are combination of ResNet and Inceptions. Uh, you can find there are other slides as well. I will skip that. Uh, here is just basically using Inception uh, like modules uh, here, like a one by one, three by three, uh, and also uh, using a skip connection. Uh, uh, trick like in ResNet and then they call this ResNext. Yeah, this is all about ResNet. Yeah, there are extras like this ResNet, ResNext, Inception ResNet, and there are yeah, different uh, applications. Uh, actually, in the original paper, they try uh, very different paths. I mean, they add, for example, uh, something, this path they removed. They just uh, try many things to find the optimum uh, architecture. Uh, in the original paper, I guess they, re they are using both uh, convolution, I mean, uh, both these identity, uh, identity paths, and they sometimes add these identity path some convolutions, like deep convolutions. So they uh, applied the both of them in the original paper. Yeah, is there any question so far? 